Candlepin Stars and Strikes is brought to you by the Thompson family of dealerships in Nashua, New Hampshire, and by Tri-State Megabucks and the New Hampshire State Lottery, helping New Hampshire schools one ticket at a time. WNDS Sports presents New England's favorite bowling show. From Lita Lanes in Nashua, New Hampshire. Featuring the best bowlers from around the region. Candlepin Stars and Strikes. And now your host, Dick Lutz and Mike Morris. Hello again, everybody, and welcome in to another edition of Candlepin Stars and Strikes on WNDS-TV from Lita Lanes in Nashville, New Hampshire. It's Dick Lutz with Mike Moore, and it is week three of our mixed doubles competition as we digress from our regular ladder format and bring you some of the top men and women bowlers in the world as you've been watching over the last couple of weeks, two more weeks to go, and some great matches still ahead. I'll tell you what, it was a really tight match last week until Sargent and Cawley poured it on six marks in a row to start their third string, and that pretty much took them over the top. This week, a tall order, Mike Morgan and Joanne Rosano. All right, let's meet our bowlers this afternoon. Here we go. First, last week's winners, our number three seed, Cindy Cawley from Franklin and Chris Sargent from Haverhill, Massachusetts. And let's find out about Cindy. Average 117, high single 169, high triple 414. Splitting her bowling uh, duties at Fico's in Franklin and Candlewood in North Reading. And they will take on our number two seeded team of Joanne Rosano of Weymouth and Mike Morgan of Lynn, Massachusetts. Joanne Rosano, average 118. High single 181, high triple is 435 bowls at Hanover, Viking Rec, and East Bridgewater, Alley Cat, and Park Place, and Mikey Morgan. Average 126, high single 212, high triple at 474, and bowls at the Metro Bowl in Peabody, Mass. The team of Cindy Cawley and Chris Sargent had a 1274 in the roll-off to earn the number three seed. The team of Joanne Rosano and Mike Morgan had a 1306 for their number two seed in this mixed doubles competition. Let's get right to it. We're coming back with this afternoon's match right after this from Lita Lanes in Nashua. It's Candleton Stars and Strikes on WNBS TV. We are ready to go with this afternoon's match. Chris Sargent will be the first to bowl at Lita Lanes in Nashua. Chris Sargent and Cindy Cauley against Joanne Rosano and Mike Morgan, and we are underway. Will it go? Yes. That's a pretty effective way to start. Chris Sargent averaged 132. His high single is 213. High triple 530. Bowls at St. Joe's in Haverhill and Park Place in Wyndham. On his way to a 300 game. Can he do two in a row? No. We have, just in case you're keeping score at home, $775 in our triple strike jackpot. So Chris puts seven in the strike to start out. And an eight box. And we get a look at Mike Morgan from Lynn, Massachusetts. By now, you're all familiar with the story. Mike's brother, Tom himself a bowler of note passed away in September a couple of weeks after that he lost his mother and he's bounced back nicely looking for two in a row and has bow been bowling well of late I'm told by a number of people I've spoken with Leaving the nine and the ten for his third ball, this box. Here's Sidney Colley. Ball tailing off to the right side. Taking out the six, nine, and ten. So still has the four horsemen on the left side. The eight pin still. C 
Cindy rolled a very impressive 600 in the roll-off. Joanne Rosano had a 623. Fair opportunity here for Cindy Cauley, who's been bowling since she was 11 years old. Will she make it? Bow back door as she takes it down. She shot it past the object pin, but the wood was positioned in such a way that she was able to take advantage of it. Joanne Rosano, how many titles does she have, Michael? A lot of them. At last count, 21, and that does not include this season. One of the best ever. That one got away from her to start. Average is 118, a high single 181, a high triple of 455. From Weymouth, Massachusetts. She had quite a run there back in the uh, 90s for Bowler of the Year. From the 96-97 season all the way through the 99-2000 season, she was the Women's Bowler of the Year. That's what, three, four great years. And then again, repeated no 102. She had a streak of 10 wins in a row on the old Channel 5 show, too. It's a six box for Joanne right there. Very uncharacteristic for her to leave four pins standing. Great team, though, Rosano and Morgan. 13.06 combined scores in their respective roll-offs to get to the second seed. Deb Regan and Mike McGann, a newcomer Mike McGann is. You'll see those two next week, the winner of this match. Joanne off the head pin. She's got the one, the two, the six, and the ten. Wood not a factor. Caught the head pin, but not able to send anything over to the right corner to pick up the six and the ten. So she'll be open. And the lead early goes to Sergeant and Cauley. Nine box for Joanne Rosano. Chris Sargent working on a spare. Chris, a police officer in the town of Groveland, Massachusetts, which is right next to Haverhill. There's a pocket shot. Boy, when he is on the pocket, they go in a hurry. Two marks in a row. Of course, we pay $50 for three marks in a row. And there's three marks in a row. We pay $775 for three strikes in a row. And you know what Cindy's thinking about next time she's up on the lane. She's got a couple of minutes to think about it, too. She throws a strike, $775 Actually, to split. $800. It's up to $800. $800 is in the jackpot. $800 in the triple strike jackpot. On further review. Well, that makes divvying up the money a little easier than 775. Now well, Mike's going to be open. And falling quickly behind as a result of the three marks in a row, two of which were strikes. Nine box for Mike Morgan, a 50 half for the team of Morgan and Rosano. Off the head pin, Mike Morgan. Mike and when they saw when I saw him walking in today how he was doing and he said he was doing fine and he said he thought that today's appearance would be somewhat emotional for him it's the first time on the show since brother Tom and his mother died to nine box check it a seven box this is a, an $800 shot for Cindy Colley not much else needs to be said you can watch it and root along with us She threw a good ball, didn't she? She sure did. 
Nothing to be ashamed of there. And that'll be a tough spare as well. She was part of the Canadian Women's Candleton Championship team winning group earlier this year. Congratulations. All her teammates except one are here. They won in Lower Sackville, Nova Scotia. Cindy Cauley, of course, right there, as you see, Bowler. Nancy Vestal is here. Cheryl Gooding in attendance. Sue Holleran, who works here at Lita Lanes. Janet Pock, a team member. And uh, Jeline Anderson, not here today. The only one missing from the Women's Candlepin Championship this year. Congratulations. Lita Lanes was their sponsor, I should point out. Cindy Cauley will be open in her two frames. And that's a nine box. And Joanne Rosano has some work to do to try to get her team back in. They're trailing by a lot early. Fifty-eight in the sixth frame against one hundred in the sixth for Cauley and Sargent. Certainly deserved better than that. Five and a seven. Some wood on the deck. How do you make this one, coach? You try and cap the wood and hope something happens. Take your shot at it. Hope the wood deflects to the left and the ball deflects to the right. No, she went the outside. Now she'll go for the cap, probably, as you suggested. That's how you make the shot. She needs a mark. Box to box down about 40 pins right now. Winner of two WCBC tournaments just this past season, the Station Zernike Invitational in January, and right here at Lita Lanes. So she won two tournaments, adding to her already large total of championships over the years. Now she's over 20. Now this shot can go. Head pin is key, of course. She's got a shot at it. Ooh, she just shot it past the head pin. So an open frame. Just one mark in the string for the team of Mike Morgan and Joanne Rosano. Four marks for Chris Sargent and Cindy Cauley. That'll be a nine box for Joanne. The lead is 41 pins after eight frames. Chris Sargent, he's thrown a couple of bombs. He's had three strikes in the string himself. He'd like to see that wood stay there and come in close, but it rolled away. The two, the four, and the five. Or the two, the four, and the eight, I'm sorry. And they're still standing. He was the WCBC Men's Bowler of the Year a year ago, 2000, 2001. And ranked number nine last year, won one title last season. That was at the Vacationland Bowling Center at Saco, Maine. He's got a total of six. WCBC wins. That ties him with Gary Carrington for fifth on the all-time list for men. Sergeant right in the pocket. Whoa, boy, that was a buried shot. Right in the one-two pocket, his left to right ball. Right in the pocket, perfect shot. They all went over simultaneously. It was an instantaneous strike for Chris Sargent. There he goes, looking for two in a row. He threw that one away, knew it as soon as it left his hand. Got a pretty good fall, and now he's trying to fill the spare. 137, 143 right now. And 144. 
The ball is still alive on the lane. Will it hit that head pin with enough force to knock it over? Will it hit it at all? It will not. 144 first string for the team of Chris Sargent and Cindy Colley. Now Mike Morgan tries to get his club a little bit closer. High string of the day, of course. It's worth $50 to be split by the bowlers from that respective team, and 144 might be a tough one to beat. Well, quarter Worcester. Mike with a good follow through, good second shot. And this should go pretty easily. It's a 10 box, 87 through nine. Needs a mark for 100. It had one mark, it was a first ball strike in the first frame by Mike Morgan, nothing since. Again, he missed the head pin, tough shot, one, two, 10. Well, he'll be open in the 10th frame and they will not break 100. So they're gonna be down by something close to 50 pins. And it'll be an eight box, a 95, and a 49 pin lead after one for the team of Chris Sargent and Cindy Colley over Mike Morgan and Joanne Rosano. Second string action is coming up next when we continue from Lita Lanes in Nashua, New Hampshire. It's WNDS-TV's Candlepin Stars and Stripes. Joanne Rosano will be first to bowl. Forty-nine pin lead for Sergeant and Carly is Joanne Rosano is first to step to the line for the team of Rosano and Morgan. They have a long way to come back. Good start. Got a great note here from Shirley and Gil Fontaine from Salem, Massachusetts. Mike, you're going to get a kick out of this one. As Joanne Rosano tries to mark here. First box, second string. Missed it. Ouch. Missed it twice. With all that wood, you'd say it looks easy, doesn't it, huh? But it's not that easy. Shirley and Gil Fontaine write that uh, for years they've been looking forward to watching our show on Saturday afternoons and Sunday afternoons while eating lunch. Then they went to a satellite dish and they lost us. Huh. They didn't get us anymore. So they subscribed to basic cable in addition to their satellite dish just so that they can watch our show. Get out of here. Thank you. Isn't that nice? It's worth the extra money because we enjoy your show so much. Nice note from... Shirley and Gil Fontaine of Salem, Massachusetts. Thank you very much. Thank you. We appreciate that. Joanne missed it. Well, it's two single pins, again, very unlike Joanne Rosano. There's the 10. Would have been a good time to crawl back with a couple of marks against a 49 pin deficit, but uh, now. Sergeant and Colley are in a position of actually picking up more pinage here as they uh, are up against two open frames. And there's Cindy Colley leaving the five pin. Threw it away, missed it. Knew it right away. And box. She was the WCBC Rookie of the Year, and in the same year, the Bowler of the Year. Extremely rare. Not sure it's ever been done before. That means in her first year of Candleton Bowling, she beat everybody and got the Rookie and Bowler of the Year. Highest pinfall. That's how that's determined. That's a pretty good year. Right through the opening. It was 94-95. Tough to follow that kind of action up, though, the next couple of years. Punching through on the left side, taking out the uh, half Worcester and another pin, the five. 
That's going to be a four box. You don't see many of those. Well, it's five pins now that uh, get subtracted from the Collie Sergeant column and go over to Joanne and Mike. Really and Mike Morgan is about due to start warming up. He's got a lot of wood out there right now, and one piece in the back is problematic. If it can roll out of the way, he would like it to. The wood in the back to the right. There he takes the spare. Still plenty of time for these two to, to come scratching and clawing back. Missed the head pin, got a pretty good fall. Oh, look at that one pin dance. The head pin moved a little bit, so did the three. Two marks in a row from Mike Morgan. You knew he wouldn't stay dormant very long. And now Chris Sargent will try to respond. Watch the end of that shot. Chris Sargent missed the head pin by a lot. Look what he got. He's got a pretty good shot. He throws so much ball, it doesn't matter sometimes where he hits the pins. They just fall. One, two, nine. Wood in front of the nine. Very makeable shot. Missed it. Missed the head pin, which was key. So he'll be open in the third. Three straight open frames for the team of Chris Sargent and Cindy Colley. Ten box. up against another spare. So the team of Morgan and Rosano ten, could uh, make up some ground here. Well, they've gotten 12 pins back now in three frames. And Chris has a tough shot here, even tougher, tougher than it was before. The 7-10, there's a couple pieces of wood out there which make this a little bit more makeable than before. Play the wood on the right to take out the 10 pin and hope your ball bounces over into that wood on the left to the seven like that and it didn't do it. I think in that case he throws the ball a little too hard. That's, that's the nature of his ball though. Which usually works for him but occasionally velocity can work against you. That'll be a 10 box and we're going to the break. And Morgan and Rosano climb back into the match. As we head to the break it's a 37 pin lead less a ball for the team of Chris Sargent and Cindy Callie over Joanne Rosano and Mike Morgan when we come back to Lita Lanes in Nashua for Candlepin Stars and Strikes on WNDS TV. Well, Joanne Rosano has a couple of marks to work on. Looking for some bonus money and looking to inch closer in the match. They trailed by 49 pins after one. They trailed by 37 less what Joanne gets on this first ball. So they could knock off 20 pins in four, four boxes, which would be pretty decent. Joanne's first ball missed the head pin. Four horsemen left side plus the nine pin. So put five in the spare. They've picked up 17 pins. Just about That's just third four boxes. Third of the uh, margin that they began. 49 pins down. So pretty good start. Will Joanne make the spare? No, she did a good job. Threw it right where she had to, just wasn't able to convert. That will be a 10 box for Joanne Rosano. And a 60 half for Rosano and Morgan. Our runner up bowlers today, $550 plus whatever bonus money they collect. And next week it's Deb Regan and Mike McGann. 1500 first prize, 1000 for the runner up next week. Joanne again missed the head pin, same shot, but she's going to have a little better out the one the two and the nine probably good to have the wood there kind of contains all the pins in a smaller area help help her take out the nine pin it's a little tough shot that nine pin is the wild card of course she's got a shot at it there it goes nice shot by joanne rosano
Cindy Colley tries to match the mark. Threw it right at the head pin. Look what she has to show for it. No wood to help on a big split. Three six on the right, seven on the left. Open frame, 30, lane 34 for Cindy Colley. That'll be a nine box. Interesting way to go for that one. <laughs> Their team last week reeled off six marks in a row. To defeat Deb Atranga and Joe Smith. Cindy's ball breaking slightly from right to left. A little bit of side spin on it. And uh, another split for Cindy. And again, no wood to help. Same shot, other side. One pin different. Yeah, basically. So Cindy will be open in her two frames. And the team of Sargent and Colley open through six of the second string after a 144 first string. That'll be a seven box. So they have picked up 21 pins plus whatever Mike Morgan gets on this ball. So the rolls have been reversed here in the second string. Mike Morgan with two WCBC titles. He was the WCBC Bowler of the Year in 1998 and 99. Six in the spare. Dickey also has the high uh, official string in the WCBC competition with a 212. They picked up 27 pins, but Mike's not able to mark in the seventh box. That'll be a 10 box. They're at 87 through seven. pin and right straight through spread eagle plus one got the eight pin in the back you go for the three on the right because that that eight pin in the back can be key to making this whole thing happen had he grazed the three pin right everything can come forward back door which is what you need this is not a conventional spare that's going to be a seven box for mike morgan they're not a good pair of boxes from Mike right there, 17 pins. And Chris Sargent will try to get his team back on track with a mark or two. On lane 34. Don't you feel like they're about to? Holly and Sargent. Right through the middle. Spread Eagle minus one as the 10 pin is kicked out. Tough shot here, of course. Picks one. So the drought continues for these guys. They are struggling. Seven markless boxes. And an eight box. Up against the seven box now by Mike Morgan in the eighth frame. Chris just keeps firing away though, doesn't he? He's relentless. That's right in the pocket, there it goes. He looks up to the sky. <laughs> so that's a strike that'll get him back on track and give them back some of their lead. That one went across the head pin to the 1-3 side. Now Joanne Rosano to finish up the second string. Right on the head pin. There it goes. Responding to Chris Sargent's strike. With a strike for the team of Rosano and Morgan, Joanne. That one crossed over to the Brooklyn side. Good mixing action at the end of that shot. Joanne holds the world record in the WCBC for the best 60 string total for women and the best 50 string total for women. On the strike, not a good first ball, but she's got another one to fill in the strike. So she's in the record books in lots of different categories. She'll be around for a good long time. Still bowling well. Very competitive. Good shot. Oh, it went through the six and ten. That pin went flying right between them, I think.
put eight in the strike. 120 so far. 122. Second string for Joanne Rosano and Mike Morgan. Now Cindy Cauley works on the Chris Sargent strike. Still working on a strike, so another ball to fill. There it goes. The spare inside the strike after the half Worcester. Big shot by Cindy Collett. Watch it again. She played it right to the outside. Perfectly done. And the spare. Now looking for three marks in a row right on the head pin. Has an opportunity for it. That was a beautiful shot at a very important time in this match. Chance for a mark here, though the seven pin still stands. So they will not get three marks in a row, but they're gonna still have a bunch of their lead. It'll be a 10 box and a 104 second string. So the team of Mike Morgan and Joanne Rosano gained back 18 of the 49 they trailed they trailed by 31 pins going to the third and final string with Chris Sargent and Cindy Cauley in the lead. As we come back to Lita Lanes in Nashua for the final string of this match of mixed doubles on WNDS-TV's Candlepin Stars and Stripes. Chris Sargent will bowl first. The men have elected to begin the third game, as you know, the format with mixed doubles. In the first string, the men start. The second string, the women begin. And then it's uh, their choice. Uh, each team individually can make that call, and in both cases, the men will begin, which means they'll bowl two more boxes in the women. Chris broke up the split. He's got the three and the six on the right side. And a mark to start out. They take a 31-pin lead into the third string. It was 49 after one. Them. Morgan, Morgan and Rosano had chopped as much as 27 pins off the lead. It's Chris. Oh, look at that shot. Look at what he's got. Well, it took them seven boxes to get on the, mo uh, the board with a mark the last game. That's where a lot of that lead evaporated. That 10 pin is half on and half off, isn't it? Is that a leaner in horseshoes? Got the five in the middle, the seven, the nine, and the 10 in the back row. The 10 is halfway off the lane. Well, you'd think the vibrations from that would just knock just it the, over. Just the air going by right. it. Right. Uh, the draft. That'll be a nine box for Chris Sargent. 25 through two to start out the third string. And Mike Morgan, knowing his team has some work to do, steps to the line. Mike, a longtime employee of General Electric in Lynn, where he prepares engine for assembly. He's been there for 20, 23 years. He and his wife, Kathy, have been married for 20 years, Kathleen. Mike Jr., Mike not Jr., it says. Mike, the son, but not Jr., 17 years old. Mike Morgan missed the spare. Have a note here from one of our bowlers you'll see next week, Mike McGann, as Mike Morgan tracks down a 10. Mike McGann would like to send his very best wishes out to his nephew, Tyler Shaw, and his parents. Tyler is only two years old and has been in the hospital for a while and not a fun thing for a young child and family. So we wish him all the very best for Mike McGann. And Mike Morgan with a strike in the second box. Watch it again. He went over to the Brooklyn side. The nine pin was the last to go. Danced across the lane before finally toppling. Here's Cindy Colley. Thin hit. Can she break up the split? Watch out. They're still falling. The 410 wood all over the place. Three, but well, one piece just fell off the deck. She's going to play it to the left and not going to make it. That will be a 10 box. Candlepin Stars and Strikes on WNDS-TV, presented by McMulkin Chevrolet in Nashua Mitsubishi, Nashua Hyundai, and Nashua Cadillac. And by Tri-State Megabucks and the games of the New Hampshire Lottery. And 
the 10 box. A couple of 10s for Cindy. Now Joanne Rosano will work on Mike Morgan's strike. Coming into this game, Morgan and Rosano down by 31 pins to Sargent and Cauley, and now up against two open frames, a chance to do some damage to make some of that ground back. Needs at least a mark here. Double strike would certainly get a lot of work done. Well, she threw a good ball. Yeah, yeah that wood is really not a factor, no. I don't think. Not very makeable spare. Filling the strike with a 10. And getting 11 pins back in the second frame. So that's a big, big spare if she can make this. That wood is half in, half out. Nice spare for Joanne Rosano. Two marks in a row. Looking for some bonus money. More importantly, looking to narrow the gap. A mark here when we have ourselves a horse race with six boxes to go. Team that doesn't win today will split $550 plus any bonus money they earn along the way. Joanne on the mark, threw a good ball. Put seven in the spare. Well, they've picked up 12 pins box to box. A mark here would put them conceivably within a mark. Very deliberate. Missed it. Well, she missed the object pin, which was the two. Just missed it. It'll be a nine box for Joanne, and we're going to go to the break with a 20-pin lead for Chris Sargent and Cindy Cauley over Mike Morgan and Joanne Rosano. When we come back to Lita Lanes in Nashua for WNDS-TV's Candlepin Stars and Strikes. Ready to go, Chris Sargent on lane 34. Six boxes remaining, 20 pins separate these two fine teams. Chris right on the head pin, too full, trying to break up that split. Can't do it. Got the three, six on the right piece of wood, four, seven, eight on the left. Nope, didn't take it. Left the four and the six, very unusual. A nine box. 49 pin lead evaporating down to 20 pins now for Cindy and Chris. It's Joanne and Mike, the question is, will time run out before they can catch up? Well, if he doesn't mark in this box, they certainly have an opportunity. There's a great first ball. Six pin still stands. Whoops. He missed it. He can't believe it, but he missed it. Hit the wood, and the ball jumped over the next piece of wood. And that'll be a 10 box. And the door is open for Mike Morgan with a mark or two to really narrow the gap. Well, Chris and Cindy have had only one mark in this game. Joanne and Mike have had two marks. They are back to back, which is even better. Mike Morgan, not a good first ball, missed the head pin. Will that split stay up the way it is? It does. The four horsemen on the left, wood angled. I don't think the wood is angled. Well, where's, where's that piece of wood going? Mike's waiting for it to settle it's down. Gonna go right off the deck here. No, it's going to hit the 10. Oh, pin. it's going to stay. Yeah, which is good. That's a good piece of wood from Mike Morgan. That helps a lot. Of course, the key is the head pin and the four horsemen on the left. That's the key. Wow. You've got to hit that head pin. So the four horsemen remain, as does the 10 pin. Best he can do now is a 10. Which, well, he missed the shot. It didn't go anyway. So, well, as it turned out, nine box. He needs a mark right here. He really does to put any pressure at all on Sargent and Cauley. Again, he missed the head pin, and look what he's got to show for it. It's the 7-10. Couple of pieces of wood. That wood out front, well, 
Going to take a shot at it. See if it scatters. Ooh, it almost did. The ball almost came back to take it. He's going to be open. Paul Willette will run down. He's our in-house scorekeeper. Take the ball out of the gutter, which is actually <laughs> almost halfway back to, uh, to Mike Morgan as he waits to shoot for his 10 box. And it will be a 10 box. Just another quick reminder, the weekend of uh, January the um, 11th and 12th, the Stacia Zernike Invitational. I'll tell you more about that here in just a moment. Cindy Colley will be open. It will be a nine box. <laughs> Station's earning invitational going on the weekend of the 11th and 12th. Run every year this time at uh, Lucky Strike Lanes in Lynn. So if you're seeing this for the first time on Sunday the 5th, check it out next weekend. And if you're watching on Saturday, you can still catch the action on Saturday and Sunday the 11th and 12th. That will be a nine box. Oh, she got the, that was uh, only the second ball. She still has one more to go. Now it'll be a nine box. So they're living a charmed life in this third string. They're not able to mark, but then again, Mike and Joanne are struggling as well. Joanne needs a couple of marks. If she could put two marks together again, they'd be back in the ball game. Time is running out. But certainly needs at least one. Well, to do it convincingly, three marks would put some serious pressure on Sergeant and Cawley. Joanne right on the head pin, breaks up the split. The fourth pin is still standing. She's got a little room for error with that piece of wood on the right, not a lot. Big shot here for Joanne Rosano. Missed it. Sometimes the easiest ones are the toughest ones. And that'll be a 10 box. Very frustrated Joanne Rosano, understandably so, missing the uh, spare leave and then picking it up as a 10. Getting only one pit pin back in the seventh box. Needs a mark here desperately. Look at that determination. Concentration. Owner of 21 titles, not including this year. Right on the head pin. There it is. There's a strike there. She only, she's thinking right now, that it should have been two marks in a row. She takes her frustration yep. back to her seat. The margin would have been seven pins instead of 18 because that was an 11-pin mistake that she made. All right, now Chris Sargent can close it out with a couple of marks here. There's one. Well, almost a strike. Got three pieces of wood out in front of that. Well, the wood is there. It looks like it's an unmissable shot. And it is. So the mark by Chris Sargent in the ninth just about puts it away. Unless Mike Morgan can string a couple more strikes. Well, if Chris puts another mark here, I think that would certainly do it. Put seven in the spare. They did leave the door open long enough. Yeah, the door was open the whole <laughs> match, sure. the whole string. And Chris will spare, and that will close the door. So Chris Sargent and Cindy Colley will advance. And they'll take on our top-seeded team of Deb Regan and Mike McGann next week. Chris Sargent closes with a strike, so three marks in a row. That's another $50 in bonus money. 
and a 119. They came back strongly, didn't they? That's $100 in bonus money in the match. They will probably Only have the highest string right. in the match. 44. Mike Morgan that threw a good ball that time, leaves the five pin. That was a must. And he missed the spare. It's been that kind of an afternoon for the team of Mike Morgan and Joanne Rosano, a nine box. And a 113 with a box to go. Believe it or not, triple strike, they'd win. Nope, that is no, not correct. Think. Nope, they lose by seven. Right. They lose by seven. I was going to say that you came up with a new way to score. Some of that new math, Dick. Yeah. I like the old math better. I'm sure that Sargent does as well. Eight box from Mike Morgan, 121 third string for Morgan and Rosano. They win the string by two. They lose the match by 29 pins to Cindy Cauley and Chris Sargent. We'll come back to meet our bowlers when we return to Lita Lanes in Nashua right after this on WNDS TV's Candlepin Stars and Strikes. All right, in the interest of time, we're going to go right to the bonus ball contest with Cindy Cauley. Bowling a ball will try to match it up with a winner at home, and it's a strike. For Cindy Colley, the team of Cindy Colley and Chris Sargent defeating Joanne Rosano and Mike Morgan, 367 to 338. And it is, let's see, can you read what that says, Michael? An eight to Austin and Kristen Austin and LaPlante, Kristen LaPlante from Salem, New Hampshire. And they pick an eight, and that's not a match. We will have a consolation prize from NNR Trophies in Winchenden, Massachusetts. And on we go up the ladder. It'll be Joanne Rosano and Mike Morgan losing today to Cindy Colley and Chris Sargent. Sergeant and Colley advance to take on Deb Regan and Mike McGann next week. For Mike Morin and our entire crew from Lita Lanes in Nashua, New Hampshire, Dick Lutz, thank you very much for watching, everybody. Our friends from Lita Lanes always like to remind you... Yeah!